We have here a series of three questions having to do with capital budgeting, specifically what are the cash flows for the different time periods in this project. Here's the information. Kell Inc. is analyzing an investment for a new product expected to have annual sales of 100,000 units for the next five years and then be discontinued. New equipment will be purchased for $1,200,000 and cost $300,000 to install. The equipment will be depreciated on a straight line basis over five years for financial reporting purposes and three years for tax purposes. At the end of the fifth year, it will cost $100,000 to remove the equipment, which can be sold for $300,000. Additional working capital of $400,000 will be required immediately and needed for the life of the product. The product will sell for $80 with direct labor and, direct and material costs of $65 per unit. Annual indirect costs will increase by $500,000 and Kell's effective tax rate is 40%. So we've got a purchase, we've got production over five years, we're going to sell it at the end, we've got depreciation, we've got additional working capital of $400,000, and so we've got all of our information. Our first question is, in capital budgeting analysis, what is the cash outflow at time zero, the initial investment, that Kell should use to compute the present value. Well, we've got just three things here that we're looking at. The first is the cost of the equipment itself. That's $1,200,000. That's a cash outflow. And we were also going to pay for installation. We were going to have to pay $300,000. That's also a cash outflow. So we're up to uh, $1,500,000 cash outflow. But we also have the working capital. That increase in working capital of $400,000 that they mentioned, that is going to be treated as a cash outflow. Okay, this is the increase in inventory, the increase in receivables. Okay, payables may have gone up by a little bit as well, but probably less than the receivables. That working capital for our purposes is treated as a cash outflow of $400,000. So this is the time zero, that initial investment that the company is making is a cash outflow of $1,900,000, which is choice D. Okay, so that's year zero. We've got all the same information for our next question. And the next question is, in a capital budgeting analysis, what is the expected cash flow at time equals three, the third year of operations, that Kell should use to compute the net present value. Now we have a couple of things here. We've got operations. We're going to be selling things. We're going to be making money from that. We've got our depreciation tax shield. Okay, we're depreciating the equipment. That's going to provide a tax benefit for us. It's going to reduce our income taxes that we're going to have to pay. And we also have those indirect costs that they talked about. So let's kind of go ahead and, and circle these, I guess. Um, uh, new equipment, we don't care about that. Depreciated on a straight line basis of five years for financial reporting purposes and three years for tax purposes. It's the three years that we care about. We're talking about tax purposes. It's the tax depreciation shield. So we need the tax depreciation. Um, it can be sold. We don't care about that in year three. We don't care about working capital in year three, so we can kind of go ahead and X some of these out. The product will sell for $80 with direct labor and material costs of $65 per unit. So there will be $15 of contribution per unit from this. And they say that annual indirect cost will increase by $500,000. So $15 per unit they tell us that we're going to sell 100,000 units per year. And so that's going to be $1,500,000 of additional operating income. So let's go ahead here and we can put our um, cash from operations. Okay, we'll call this cash from operations, our cash flow from it. That's going to be $1,500,000. But, but... We need to remember that we have taxes in this. So let's go ahead and we can do taxes in a couple of different ways. We can do them each individually for each item 
or we can do them at the end, kind of calculate a taxable income number. I'm just going to go ahead and do this for each individual one. And so what we end up with here is we take 40%, remember the tax rate is 40%, we take 40% out of that 1500000 and what we're left with is $900,000 of after-tax cash flows from operations. Now, we also had those in indirect costs each year. They are going to increase each year, and the increase that they told us was it's going to be $500,000. Okay, this is a cash outflow, but again, that's going to be reduced by taxes as well. We're going to get to deduct the taxes from that, and so that $500,000 cash outflow, when we take out the taxes, becomes a $300,000 cash outflow after taxes. Now, the last number that we have is the tax depreciation shield. The asset had a $1,500,000 cost, the cost plus installation. That is going to be depreciated over for tax purposes three years. So it's going to be $500,000 of tax depreciation per year. This becomes a tax deductible expense. But we don't have a cash flow directly related to it. What we have is a decrease of our net income, which decreases our taxable income. Our taxable income has been decreased by $500,000. We multiply that by 40%, and so the amount we have to pay for taxes has decreased $200,000. So we have a $200,000 decrease in tax payable. This becomes a cash inflow. Okay, nobody's paying us this money, but this is reducing the amount that we have to pay for taxes. So this becomes our tax depreciation shield, and the amount that we calculated for it is a $200,000 inflow. So in year three, these are our cash flows. These are also the cash flows for year one and year two as well, but the question is about year three. We've got $900,000 of after-tax income or cash flow from operations. We have a $300,000 after-tax cash outflow for those indirect costs. And we have a $200,000 inflow from the tax depreciation shield. We add all of this together. And we get $800,000 as the, the cash flow for year three. Okay, that's our $800 cash flow for year three. Okay? Now, the next question, the last question, we've got all of the same information. The last question is about year five. Okay? Now, in year five, if we go back to this, we've got some different information that we're interested in. We are no longer interested in depreciation because it's depreciated for three years for tax purposes. Okay? We don't care about that anymore in year five. We do care about the 100,000 units, and they still have a $15,000, or I'm sorry, a $15 um, contribution per unit. Just dropped the word there. The $15 contribution per unit is going to give us the $1,500,000 of contribution. We're going to have to pay taxes on that. This is the same as we did in year three, and so this comes down to a $900,000. We also have still this indirect costs are increased by $500,000, and again, that has to be adjusted for taxes, so that's going to become $300,000. What we have that's new for year five is the working capital is released. That recovery of the working capital is going to be a cash inflow and we also have the cash flows connected to selling the equipment. Okay, we have the selling of the equipment. We're going to have to pay $100,000 to remove it, but we're going to be able to sell it for $300,000. And so those are the cash flows that we have. So we can go ahead and just kind of put these out here as, as we did before. We have operating. We already did the, the tax part of that's 
900, we have the indirect costs. We already did that for year three. That's going to come out to be a $300,000 outflow. So we're at a $600,000 inflow right now. And what we have new this in year five is we have the recovery of the working capital. That's $400,000. This is a non-tax event. The increase in working capital, there's no tax impact in year zero, and there's no tax impact at the end when that working capital is released. So that's going to be a $400,000 cash flow. Then we have the sale and removal. Now, the sale and the removal has two cash elements to it. It's plus 300000 minus 100000 so what we have is a net of $200,000 gain on the sale and removal of this equipment. The book value, I'm sorry, the tax value of the equipment is zero because it was fully depreciated at the end of year three. So this is a $200,000 gain. Okay, a $200,000 gain. If there's a gain, we're going to get to pay taxes on it. We're going to pay 40% in taxes and so that is ultimately going to become a $120,000 cash inflow. $200,000 of which we pay 80,000 of it in taxes. And so what we end up with is $120,000 from the sale and removal of the equipment. So we've got four cash flows, the recovery of the working capital, the net sale and removal of the equipment, the, the proceeds and the taxes on that, then we have the operating income and the indirect expenses. We add all of this together and our cash flows in year five is $1,120,000. Okay, just a standard question in terms of the cash flows for our long-term project that we're looking at. We've got year zero, we've got the investment, the creation of the working capital, the increase in the working capital. We have the operations and the tax depreciation shield during all of those years that the project is functioning. And then at the end, we have to sell the equipment, which we might or might not be able to do, the recovery of that working capital. But all of this comes down to we need to be able to calculate the, those cash flows so we can make an analysis as to whether or not this project is one that is going to be beneficial to the company or one that is not going to be beneficial to the company.